I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Washington, D.C., kind of hard to tell, uh, and, from, and from our offices in Sydney, Australia. This is Gallup's Called the Coach, recorded on March 7th, 2017. Well, the coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insight, and strategies to help maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have questions during this webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you right below the main video window down there. Just check down there. There's a little chat room down there. Just hit the login button, bottom left-hand corner. Choose the guest account. Take the guest name out. Put your name in. Hit submit. We'd love to have you join us in the chat room as well. If you're listening to the recorded version, or you need custom strengths coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, you can contact us. Send us an email, coaching at gallup.com, or you can use the contact form right there on the live page. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your coaching resources and Clifton Strengths training needs. You can also catch the video both streaming and now downloadable audio for offline listening. A lot of that is available for you, and many of you do listen to it that way. We appreciate you do that. We have a brand new mobile app as well that just came out this week. If you haven't checked Ooh. that out, maybe download it for the first time or upgrade. Either way, it works. Works great. We're getting great reviews on it. All the information on how to do that is on our coach's blog. Head out to coaching.gallup.com. Ann Lingefelter is our host today and works as a learning solutions consultant with Gallup out of our Sydney, Australia office. And it's always great to see you and welcome to another Call to Coach. Yes, thank you. I think this is the first call to coach that I've done with you, Jim, where you've actually been in Washington. Um, so I had to like pause there for a moment and uh, uh, and try to yeah, scratch my no, head and say, what's and going on? <laughs> no green screen. Some people have uh, accused me of like green screening this in. Uh, actually out in the Washington, D.C. area recruiting uh, this week, and it just worked out that I could do call to coach from the office, and so it worked out really well. So we're coming in from the Washington, D.C. office. Yeah, well, fantastic. Um, we're we're always happy to be here, and I'm sure Kelly is too. Um, today is a, a great uh, a great day. If, if folks are watching the show live, um, we kick off the Gallup Student Poll in Australia today, um, and that measure is done just once a year um, from March 7th to April the 7th uh, this year. So we're excited about that, and uh, looking forward to getting all the results from the the students on their hope, well-being, engagement, entrepreneurial aspiration, and those important non-cognitive metrics. So really excited about that. Um, my guest today is Kelly Wacher, and Kelly is a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. She is also the founder of Corporate Magic, and we'll have to talk about that name that you've chosen for your company, <laughs> Kelly, because I think that that, that, that is, a, is, is a very interesting name. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with that? Yes, um, and it's, it is an interesting name, and I only rebranded in the last few years with that name, and it, it really was about... Um, creating the magic within with others and uh, it, it came after my strengths after I'd done all my strengths and I've always been very ta-da uh, <laughs> uh, and, and I think life is a bit ta-da and uh, <laughs> and people's awareness around uh, who they are is, is very is magical um, so I decided that, uh, that that some of the stuff that we're doing with people it really it really is magic and people say to me you know do you pull a rabbit out of a hat? And I said, well, it's not that sort of magic. It, I said, the magic is in you, not in me. So uh, really, that's what it's about, In Well, look, I, I love it, Kelly. You've been on a panel um, of coaches for us here um, previously in the in the Sydney office. And you were always so well received because you do a, a brilliant job of really conveying the the excitement and enthusiasm that happens when people really have an understanding of their strengths and can really apply those impactfully in the workplace. So thanks a lot for joining us. We do appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Yeah, so Kelly has about 20 years in, in leadership, sales, customer service, uh, and you started off in the hospitality industry, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. I did. Yeah. And, and then have branched out since then. Um, but sh one of the other things I think is great and really keen for you to share with our audience today is you're, you know, in your work, you don't just use Gallup Strengths, you certainly do, but you use it in conjunction with some other tools too. And I think that's always good for, for folks to hear about and to understand how they um, certain tools can complement one another. Um, before we go any further, I want to talk about your top five, which are individualization, relator, maximizer, empathy, and achiever, correct? Yes. And, and when, when you sent those across to me, Kelly, I thought it was interesting because 
because I asked for your top five and uh, you sent across a table that showed me <laughs> your strengths results from like 2013 and then yes. your strengths results from your second time you took it was just last year, 2016. Yes. Yes. Um, and t tell the audience and Jim um, what, you know, what you found when you retested. Yeah, of course. So what I found when I was doing a lot of the, the strengths coaching is people would say to me, do they change? And I, I didn't know <laughs> because usually we just you just do it the once. And so because I had the question a lot, I thought, well, you know what, it's been three years since I first did my strengths. And when I first did them, it was related empathy, positivity, uh, individualization and connectedness. So they were all in the relationship um, field in the top five. And then uh, when I did them again in 2016, I still had those five in the top 10, but I had um, uh, increased my maximizer and my achiever. And and really for me, that makes a lot of sense because it's been, uh, that's been since I changed and rebranded to Corporate Magic and uh, and really have been pushing and, and uh, building the client base and, and really wanting to achieve more and do uh, do more and create more and put more into my programs uh, so people can achieve more. And that's very maximizer talk, I'm sure. Um, so, so that's why I did the two. Uh, and I think, you know, in 2013, when I looked at it, it, it really, it, I really connected with those ones in 2013 and the journey I'd been on and where I was at that point. Um, but when I look at the, the next ones, uh, you know, in 2013, Maximizer uh, came in at number eight then as well. Um, so, you know, really it was for me to say, yeah, you know what, I think this whole concept of the yearning um, that we have, it, it, it does show, it does stay over the years. Yeah. Mm. And and is do you find it's an issue with a lot of your clients? I mean, I know you you mentioned this often people will ask you and does do they change or or what if they're different? Is it something that you find people focus on too much or or are you surprised about that? No, because what I try to say to them is like this is just your top 5. And uh and I think that there are 34 34 strengths for a reason. Yeah, and, and I think that there are times where you actually have to be able to dig in and pick up a strength that, that perhaps isn't a natural, uh, you know, in your face sort of talent for you, but you need to use it at a certain time. I mean, I can tell you that analytical and input continue to be in my bottom five, but I still have to do my accounts <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, and have some, so there's some analytical things in what I do. So it's, it's very important to understand that, you know, we can use all of the strengths, but these are the ones, as you say, that I feel them every day. You know, I feel them in my work. When I look at what I do for a living um, and I look at my strengths, I just, I just think, how could I have been anything else, <laughs> you know, besides what I do? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your journey. How, how did you get introduced to strengths um, and how did you get to where you are today with it? Wow. Well, um, I started my career very early in hospitality. I started working when I was 16 and uh, I was always very determined to, 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 to move up in the world and, and I chose hospitality. Um, and I was uh, fortunate enough to, to be given a position uh, in, in a large travel company Thomas Cook at the time and we had a client who was who was a bit of a tyrant really to be honest with you and wouldn't speak to anybody and the people that if you answered the phone and this person uh you know and it wasn't their consultant she would abuse you and and things like that and they gave her to me to look after and um <laughs> and I was just I was I think I was 19 at the time um and uh it really was it was that whole concept of where you learn to become what you are at work and, and and it becomes the person that you are and I remember I used to have to move this person's house for her I had to go to the pub two nights a week with her I had to do everything I had to do everything to please this client and I really learned to be a people pleaser you know and which is not a resourceful strength of course but um uh, but I learned to do it and I did it very well and uh you know and, and, and it occurred to me one night um, we were in we were in a five star hotel bar somewhere, and I and I looked at her and I thought, you know, if you weren't this person from this company, you wouldn't be anything. You couldn't be the type of person that you are now because you just you can't get away with that that sort of behaviour. So, who are you? Who are you when you're not this job? 
Yeah, and I think in, uh, it was then that I started thinking uh, myself. You know, what is this? Uh, and I do call it sometimes a bit of a black hole that you have a, a yearning for something and you don't know what it is. Um, you know, and uh, fast forward, sort of, you know, ten years later, I, I, I've had a wonderful career in hospitality. I um, I have used what I now know to be my strengths in hospitality. I. Um, uh, remember working as director of sales in hotels and and I remember trying to motivate people a lot um, or create a motivating environment and getting dressed up with love goggles and, and a feather boa and, and as, the, as the head of the department and dancing around my staff saying, you know, <laughs> singing the winner's dance, you know, the, out of Flubber <laughs> from Robin Williams, you know. Um, <laughs> and uh, that, I think that was my, my positivity on steroids now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It was people would say, Kel, you're really filling my love bucket. <laughs> and, uh, and it wasn't that long ago that I had one of the girls, this is probably 10 years Years ago, now that I was here, sent me an email saying, "I miss you. My love bucket's a bit empty." Um, mm -hmm. And and the impact and the culture change that you can do with the strengths. And I guess, um, but then in 2013, I was on the path of do everything, do any personality test, behavioural test. I just <laughs> I just wanted to know really a lot more about who I was. I'd started my coaching journey. I had done um, my NLP and my and my master track, my master um, prac, and um, and I just really I really wanted to know more about me so that I could then impact people around me in a positive way, and uh, uh, and that's when I first did the. the the strengths and I just I just did it from this book I think I found it somewhere um, and uh, and I just did it out of the back and I didn't really look at it I think I, I marked the pages I highlighted the pages that that were me and then I went right well it sounds like me and then I put it away and it wasn't until that was in 2013 it wasn't until 2014 that my partner who works at, um, at, a, at a large bank said to me you know you should do the Gallup strengths training as a coach because you would be much more credible as a coach, <laughs> if you did this Gallup Strengths training, because so many blue chip organizations use it. And I was moving very much into the corporate space then. And so I said, okay, because I, I love to, to, uh, to, to learn new things. Um, and as everyone does, when it's all about you, you love it even more. So I, um, I, I started my journey then uh, with Gallup Strengths. And, you know, I just loved it from the moment I walked in the room. Um, uh, I had great trainers. Robin was there at the time. Um, Claire was there, and I just I had a lot of fun, and it really it really um, uh, rang true to me. Just the whole the whole process of it. And I remember in one of the uh, when you do a practice there on the strengths and. And one of the girls that was observing said, oh, no, you did it. You didn't do it right. You you just sort of started talking to this person and then you deep dive into her. And <laughs> I, said to, I said to the client, oh, sorry, sorry if, if I use too many, you know, other types of coaching. Um, but essentially she said, but I was very comfortable with that. And and then when I looked at my, my strengths and I have Relator, and as I understood Relator further on, that is what Relators do. They, they literally, people come to them and they're able to deep dive very quickly and build rapport. So, um, so my, my, as I said, my Gallup strengths journey began in those four days and I just loved it. And there was so much information. Um, and uh, when, when I left there, and, and one thing for me is, um, as I said, because my input's so far away, is what do I do with it all when I go? You know, how do I put this? into into practice out here in in the in the real world for me in my coaching space um but that's that's essentially how that how it all started okay so one of the things that i liked um when we were talking prior to the show um yeah. a lot of times when i'm interviewing coaches they talk a lot about how their clients uh, how they help their clients gain an understanding of their their strengths um and and apply it in their workplaces but they rare they don't always talk about their own strengths and specifically how they use those i'd love to and you you did that more than i think anyone else i've spoken to and, I, and so i thought that yeah. would be a nice a nice thing to talk about if we break down your top five as yes. reported in 2016. Yes. <laughs> so yes. we Sorry. start okay. right we were starting with um uh positivity right yep. or, or no yeah individualization yeah that's right so um can you walk us through how specifically you you know take advantage of your top five one at a time and pointed towards success in your work 
and in, in, of course. in my yeah. Of so course. starting with individualization, I think. Yeah. So individualization for me is it is about the uniqueness of of an individual, of a person, and it is about not. Uh, not putting everybody in a box and it is that lack of um, judgment that, that non-judgment that you need to have around people and um, whether it's one-on-one -on -one coaching and or whether it's uh, group coaching I find my individualization is really key for me when I'm in the room because it enables me to quickly get an idea of each of the people's learning styles um, I'm able to hear their different uh, language um, and 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 I can almost create a room where I am able to cover all of those learning styles and keep everybody engaged. Um, and for me, that's really key. It's it's key, that I, and, and I think one of the highlights of my career, and I think I, I was telling this about you about this before, was I had a room of 40 people, 40 middle-aged women, and me and I was on my own and I had bells and whistles literally bells and whistles um, <laughs> to keep them uh, you know entertained throughout the, the the sessions that I was doing and one of the ladies and people laugh at me when I say this but I think it's almost one of the best compliments I've ever had is she stood up and she was right at the back of the room where you think people are nodding off a little bit and she put her hand up and she said Kel Kels and I said, what can I do for you and she said look I'm really busting to go to the loo but I don't want to miss a thing do you mind taking a break? <laughs> and, and you know, I was like, I was a little bit gobsmacked, but I, but I said, of course, you know, uh, yeah, what's good for the one is good for the many. And uh, we took a short break. And But I remember thinking um, afterwards that the feedback from there, people had said, you touched every single person in this room in some way. And that to me is my individualization. It's not, it's not one size fits all. It's, it's the ability to be a, a bit of a chameleon in the room and be able to fit all sizes in the room with the different styles that you use. And, um, and I love that, Anne. It's, it's, you know, I love it. I love people watching. Um, I love sitting in the car and guessing what people do for a living <laughs> as, they, as they cross the road in front of me. Um, yeah, so, and it, it also really helps me um, combine with my empathy as well. Um, uh, in, in when I'm coaching one-on-one -on -one, to really listen, to really listen to people and people's stories and be able to understand that, you know what, not everybody wears the same shoes as you and everybody has their own uh, their own context around their story and yeah. and it's not for me to judge that in, in a one-on-one -on -one type of session. So it really helps me with, with that, that coaching as well. Yeah, I, I, we'll move to empathy next, but before we leave individualization, when you when you were having these, um, I can see how it works in the room. You know, when you're doing with a team, a team or a group, yes. when you when you're when you're coaching with one on one, um, I'm I'm interested. How do you, especially for corporate clients, how yes. do you whose agenda is in the room, whose agenda, uh, do, right? How do you how do you manage that? Um, yeah. One of the things I've I've found on one on ones is is people come into the executive coaching space, um, and I you know an organisation might bring me on board and say, look, I, I really need you to do some work with this person or this person, and we go to call it executive coaching. And what I say is, that's fine. What is it that you need from this person that they're not delivering? Is is the first thing. And I know that's looking at what they're not delivering, but but I need to know where their expectations are. Um, then I will meet with the individual and I will say to them, you know, what is it that you're looking for in this? In, in this? And, then I try, and then I look at it and I say, well, how can the two come together to create a win-win for the organisation? Now, I have to tell you, a lot of people might say, well, they need this skill or they need this skill or they need that skill in leadership or they do this or, or, or do that uh, sort of uh, unresourceful behaviour. But then when I speak with them, there's a lot of things going on in the background. Um, and then this is where I combine and really I, I combine the extended disc behavioral profile, I combine their gallop strengths and I use NLP techniques and, uh, and matrix therapies because often people have got behavioral patterns that they have had for years. Um, and what happens is if you don't clear the emotion out of it, then the trigger here at this point is much more intense than it would be if you cleared it back here. 
So I'm finding more and more with executive coaching that people are, um, uh, they have self-esteem issues or worthy worthy issues. Um, mm. They have issues dealing with uh, the bosses above them. Uh, they have issues with people uh, below them, you know, whether it's um, how they're being treated or how they're communicating with those people. So uh, I really find that executive coaching is not, it, it, it is, the individualization allows me to bring a really holistic approach. And then I go back to the organization. I say, okay, I've spoken with both of you. I can do something here that will suit both needs. But this is what it's going to look like. Um, these are the parts that I can share with you that the client has agreed with and these are the parts that I'm not going to share with you because it's, it's private to the client. But what I can tell you is the result will come both ways. Yeah. So, so that's that's how I do it. I, I, you just can't go in with one script for executive coaching and put it onto everybody. Yeah, everybody's absolutely. different. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I like the way that you handle that because I think it's a common problem, right? In when dealing with corporate clients, um, who, you know, who, whose agenda is going to dominate? So uh, that's a great way to manage it. Um, yes. Looking at your empathy, you started to go there before. Tell me how you use your empathy in your work to success. Oh my goodness, my empathy has had to, I think it's the one that I've had to develop the most uh, from immature to mature over the years. As I said, watching Still Magnolias still still makes me a puddle of tears. Um, <laughs> and But I can now watch the AMP elephant mother and baby elephant ad without crying. <laughs> so, so I think I've created some, some lovely personal boundaries around that. Empathy is one of those things that... Um, uh, you know, I'm, I've often been told that I have and I've been told I'm an empath and, and understanding that and, and that you can feel other people's feelings in the room and you need to decide which are yours and which are theirs and, and that's very complex on a, on a psychological side or a spiritual side or, or whatever. Um, for me, the empathy really is, it is that ability to to not judge someone at any point that they're, they're at. It is that ability to be able to step out of my shoes, make it not about me, and make it about them. And that that is what I found is the only way that I can use empathy resourcefully is to really disconnect myself uh, from the from any emotions that I'm having, you know, um, and really focus on the client. It's, it's kind of like when you're doing public speaking or they say that people would rather be in the box than doing the eulogy, yeah? And it's just because you're worried about what people think about you. And, um, and, I, and I've heard it said before that we do think about ourselves 24-7, Anne, you know, and, and, and I say, well, have you, have you ever had a dream that you're not in? You know, and because you're either in it or you've seen it through your own eyes. So, so we are very, as human beings, we are very self-focused. And I think that the key to me with empathy is learning um, that, you know, it's not to be robotic because you can still be empathetic but not sympathetic. So it's um, it's really about, wow, you know, this stuff has happened and, and, and really recognising and validating that for that person but not taking your own stuff on. And as a coach I've learned if you, do, if you are triggered by stuff from your clients, then you need to deal with your stuff and then come back. Go to your supervisor or, you know, your supervision or your own coach. Um, and that's one thing I think all coaches have a coach, good coaches have a coach um, because that stuff comes up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like the boundaries. I like the, the, the leaving your emotions out of it and, and making it about them. Um, again, mm. easier said than done. Um, Very, <laughs> I learned a lot about anchoring actually in NLP, which is really interesting because sometimes you can touch a person in a certain place and that will that will bring an, an emotion for them. So I'm also very careful when some if somebody's talking to me and they are emotional, not to touch them. Mm. Uh, anyway, because you you create you actually create an anchor on that that sad emotion or that um, distressing emotion for them. Yeah. So uh, unless they ask, you know, for a little hug or something. <laughs> yes, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I want to hear more about NLP and about the extended disc um, after we get through your top five. But um, what mm. um, what would you like to talk about next? Relator, maximizer, achiever. Oh, my relator. I love my relator. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't. I didn't understand my relator until I did a lot of strengths. I used to be one of those people that I always get asked in the street for directions, and um, uh, uh, people tell me the most unusual things about themselves when I first meet them. <laughs> and and uh, uh, sometimes it's a little bit too much information. But again, because <laughs> because of my empathy, I just go, okay, 
<laughs> Great. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, and so my, my relator really allows me to build deep relationships with people that, that allows me to create loyalty with my clients. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had clients say to me sometimes, I feel like you are part of my organisation. And, and I love that because I, I don't want to be as a coach or as someone that wants to make significant difference uh, in organisations or in individuals. I don't want to be a one hit wonder. Yeah, I, I don't want to do a one-day time management training and that's the end of it. I, I want to become part of the organisation and part of threading through um, seeing multiple people so that you can create sustainable change. Yeah, And so for me, my relator does that. It really allows me to be able to, to, to push those buttons um, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client recently say to me, would you mind coming and doing an opening of one of our stores because I actually think you know more about the organisation than, than the people that are doing it. Um, mm -hmm. But it was really just for the, for the, for the hype of it all and, and, and things like that. And it was because when you spend so much time in an organisation, you learn about it from every aspect from the top, from the bottom, from the middle, from the sides. So you do get a really rounded picture um, around their, their values and their passions and their people, which is which is great. So that's that's really what I use my relator for. Yeah, excellent. That's fantastic. Um, you're obviously well loved by your clients that, that that they invite you back so much and know and know know you so well and you know so much about them. That's awesome. I know. I love my clients. I love them. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. And what about Maximizer? Maximizer, Maximizer is interesting for me. Uh, um, this is one that's that's come up, uh, as, it has risen, as I should say, like a phoenix from the ashes. Um, and, and I think um, when I look at Maximizer, and it's it's sort of good, better, best. And I think that it's been my journey through uh, through my coaching and through my training facilitation um, that I do try. I have always tried to do more, to add more to provide more I, I, I do everything I try to do with my with my colleagues uh, my clients at 120 um, percent I want to add value I, I want to see results and and for me maximizer I guess one of the examples of maximizer for me that that, that it kind of doesn't work that well for me though is that I I I put together the programs based on what my customers' needs are and then I practice and practice and practice it and I can be the night before practicing till 3 o'clock in the morning, the night before delivering, practicing, making sure I've got it all, um, which is really that maximizer, but a little bit unresourceful since I've got to present it at you know, 8 o'clock the next morning. Um, what happens, what happens is, is, you know, what hey, I Kelly, before we... Takes yeah. Yeah. Kelly, yeah. can you hear me? Hey, do me a favor, unplug your mic and plug it back in. I think we got a little loose on your connection oh. there. There you that's, go. How's that? Okay, that's much better. Sorry, you were sounding like a robot, so we just wanted to make hmm. sure we were. I think you just loosened up your cord a little bit. Keep going. Sorry. Okay. All right. I just didn't want to pull my shirt up, Jim. That would be that wouldn't be good for any of us. <laughs> that wouldn't be great. <laughs> <laughs> now where was I? Maximizer. Um, Maximizer. <laughs> no, it's right. You're up in the middle of the night practicing for your yes, presentation. That's it. But then yeah. my individualization kicks in and it all just comes to you based on yes. what's going on in the room. Yeah, um right. so but but I think, you know, the practice of having done that really is that I know the content now back to front, inside out. I, I know when to change and, and, and chop. And I think the maximizer really um, really helps me with that and getting the best out of out of the day. Um, I also think I use my maximizer um, to really see the potential in others. I I, I really uh, you know, when I'm when I'm with them, I have this assumption that you know they have the resources to do whatever it is they need to do, and it's for me that my maximizer is about creating their awareness of that so that they can bring them to life. Yeah, that's the magic. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Is there any other strength you want to comment on that you feel you particularly use and draw on to be successful in work? I think I, I, I think I do use my connectedness quite a bit. I think uh, I have a real belief that, that all things happen for a reason. Um, uh, I, I do think that 
uh, sometimes, uh, again, this is another one that I really learned to to trust in. This is about a lot about trust for me, um, but it's also about doing the work. You know, it's also about taking the action. And when you take the action, it will, uh, you know, it, it will provide some result for you. And a great example of this is um, I've been trying to contact, connect with Claire, who had been training um, overseas. And I connected with her last week and she said to me, oh, you know, have you done that call to coach yet with Anne? And I said, well, no, actually I haven't. <laughs> and she said, well, I'm just going to pass that on to Anne and then she can contact you. And, and you know, I hadn't even thought about that um, in the weeks before because I had some other stuff going on. So it's like, well, Anne, there must be a reason that you and I and Jim's in Washington, that the, you know, in the nation's capital and we're all here together today and uh, – whatever reason that is it could be someone listening who wants to hear something that i have to say or that you have to say and so you know and i do that that's that's a real um uh you know, it's a real concept for me this connectedness yeah fantastic um when i was looking at your website to prepare for the show i i really like it um and i think that the thing that i think is great about it in particular is more so than some that i've seen is everything is there like it's right out there so i mean it it talks about um you know all the training that you do it goes down into detail about what you know what, what's out there um, and what you're going to learn if you do it. Um, and it was interesting to see some of the, um, you talk about sort of the magic of leadership and starting with self mastery. Um, and and I, I noticed that in that you definitely bring DISC in and, and Gallup as well. Can you talk a bit about sort of a, com a compare and contrast? Um, of course. DISC and Gallup. Why do you, what does DISC offer in your training? What does Gallup offer? How do you, do you know what I mean? How, how do you use yeah. them together? Of course. Yeah, so so what I do um, is, you know, with the extended disc, I generally, it's, it's a bit different to disc. It's extended disc, which is, it looks at more 161 behaviours rather than the, the 16 that disc look at. But what I want to do is, from the outset in my, in my programs, people need to understand themselves first. Yeah? I did it. I understood myself first before I could help other people. And I think it's so important because uh, I think, you know, you're you have an unconscious awareness of who you are and it stays there sometimes until you open up the, the, the unconscious mind to allow the consciousness to, to, to grasp this idea of, well, this is who I am and this is how I behave and this is how it impacts those around me. And, uh, and so what I do is I start with that, but I don't give it to them straight away. I... I, I I first, uh, uh, I, I do an exercise with them and I get them to say, well, what do they think these behaviours, where do they think they sit with these behaviours? And, and they sort of plot themselves around the room. Um, and it's really interesting to see where people see themselves versus where they uh, where they rate themselves on the extended disc profile. And, uh, and so I f first use that and then they have the first surprise, you know, the first aha. Okay, great, fantastic. And I want them also to be able to recognise that in others, those behaviours in others. So we do that at the beginning. And Gallup is, is fabulous and I round up, I round up with Gallup um, at the end of the programs that I do because it really, this, this the whole process they've gone through is who am I, what am I about, how do my behaviours impact others, how am I communicating with others? So we move from self into team and managing other people into really learning how to coach, be a coaching leader. Um, and then we move into the Gallup strengths and they're always very excited at the end to have that. And really what I do with that, again, is I don't give it to them straight away, even though they've done it so they know it. I pretend it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, But we, we do a game and Dion was great. He, he created a visual game where they have to they have to put the pictures um, onto the strengths to understand what they are and so we do that and then I have them do a testimonial um, which is part of the, the Gallup stuff on, on one of their strengths and how does this work for them and how, how do they use it and I have them talk to each other about their strengths and they really again they it's they find it very insightful and then and then they start looking at uh using the team um the team strengths grid and they look at who's got what and where um what what i i encourage them to do uh is really is to do the rest of them to do the the 34 because the top five as i said when i when i did mine the first time when it was a relationship when i thought 
oh no, I'm not strategic and I'm I can't influence anybody and I you know and I thought well that can't be right because I'm high eye in uh, in extended disc and and I've got some D so I've you know I can do a little bit of command or self assurance or something so so it really is it, it's a validation for both both of them and I and I say do the rest because you know the next five might be those ones that you you're looking for but i also look at them and say well how does this work for you so if you're going to do the the testimonial on this particular strength what does it sound like yeah and and i get them to speak from that strength point of view mm. um so uh yeah when you're when you're in a um in an organization and you're trying to embed it into the culture how do you do it when you have so much language do you know what i mean there's disc language there's strengths language is it confusing um you know, how, how do you make it work? I, I know in really large organizations, sometimes every layer of management has a different tool that's used or a different thing that's focused on as opposed to having one that just across all levels of the culture. How do you how do you make it work with multiple tools? Yeah. I guess what I do with with the um, extended disc, it's really I, I use it on an individual level. I don't use it on a on a group level. I think mm -hmm. that is really them. It's about them. It's their behaviour that I want to talk about, and I want them to understand others' behaviours. Mm -hmm. With Gallup, um, I've done the strengths coaching, but then I've also done the Gallup Q12 mm -hmm. um, with some of the organisations and looked at those, and then gone back and looked at the strengths and and with some of them, like you'll see. You know, you will see some uh, combinations of Gallup strengths and extended disc, and you think, well, of course that person is like that because they're a high I or they're a high C. So of course they've got analytical and uh, and those sorts of things. Not that there's any science around that. It's kind of more like an in, an, an intuition, and 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 uh, you know, it comes from them because people essentially know know who they are all we're doing with this is bringing it to their awareness and bringing it to you know how am I using it uh in in a basement level and how am I using it in a balcony level and 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 really what can I do differently and mm -hmm. and looking for opportunities of how to um how to raise their own awareness and, and find opportunities for them to use their positivity um and I think that this is for me, and this was a big thing after I did the Gallup Strengths, is I got a bit lost in um, there's so much wonderful information, as I said to you, how to bring it all together. And because for me it was fine. We know the what, yeah? We know the what it is. We know what it's for. Uh, we know why it's there. But uh, we, know, we know how to get it, but we, we don't know what to do with it afterwards, yeah? So I give people their top fives, and, and this became very clear to me when I had, um, I, I did a, an overall group session with the top five, and then in the break, uh, one of them came up to me, because I always say, if you've got questions, please come and see me in the breaks. Um, I, had, didn't, I had a bit of a queue this time, there was 50 participants, and um, and I sat down with him, and he had, uh, he had, uh, competition self-assurance and um command mm -hmm. and i said how, how is it for you at work you, and he's a young fella i said do you struggle a bit with <laughs> with, with people of authority or <laughs> you know, um and he said yeah people think i'm really pushy and really this and really that and i just <laughs> you know, and i sat with him for a little while and he had some other ones as well and, and as i said I, I try not to judge i really asked the question first before i before i said anything and i said oh okay and um, you know, just in that conversation with him, he really you could see that the light sort of come on a little bit as to what he was doing. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, the director there who had me in the room at the time said to me, Cal, you know, that was great. Can you do this for everybody? So I ended up having to do 50 Gallup Strengths debriefs for 45 mm -hmm. minutes each over mm -hmm. a fortnight's period. So I got a mm -hmm. great learning. I, I, I was like shot into Gallup world, uh, into, into strengths world for, for some time because I, I went back and my maximizer wanted to know about every strength now. And, um, but it was, it was a really great exercise for me to be able to, if I was worried about using it, the tool, I'm not worried anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the insights and things. And I think I told you about uh, a young man that had Includer and he had been bullied at school and, and when he looked at all of his strengths together, um, how that had shown up for him and, uh, you know, and, and so so I find it, it's really insightful. I mean, <laughs> people have said to me after that, they, they're like saying to me, are you psychic? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe a little bit. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, or they say, oh, you know, did you just get all this from from being in the room with us for those two days, or or you know, did, did have you been talking to my boss about me? And and this is the thing: is people really they get themselves. When, that, when you have the discussion with them, they start to get themselves. And this is, this is the first, this is the beginning of, of their, their journey of development and their journey into, you know, enlightenment, if you like, about where their strengths are. And I can tell you that I'm not always training, uh, coaching people to stay where they are either. A lot of times we're coaching people and, and looking at it and saying, why are you here? <laughs> um, because this, you know, and I know it's not a tool for for employment, uh, you know, or a human resource selection. tool, or mm. so, selection tool, yeah. Mm. Um, but but when we look at it, and when you have the discussions, and that combines with the coaching and the NLP, you know, the, all of the coaching tools that I use, and we have the discussions, and I sometimes say to people, "Wow, you know, why why are you here?" And it's a question that I, you know, 20 years ago I used to ask people around a table when I used to have to do a lot of entertaining and as, a, as a, an icebreaker I used to say to people, you know, if you haven't won lotto but you could be doing anything you wanted to do now, what would it be? And rarely did they say what I'm doing now. And I think that's incredibly sad and because I look at myself now and I go asking myself that question, I am doing exactly what I want to do and I'm loving it, you know. And so I want people to be able to go into that space as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. How, how do you get support doing what you're doing? Like do you connect with uh, networks of other coaches or strength users or, you know, what? how do yeah. you, yeah, how do you learn yeah. in this space? Oh, there's so much learning. There's so much learning. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, because I'm not input, I, uh, it's very low for me. I. I struggle a little bit with finding time to do lots of things. I, I have a little three-year-old as well who I'm constantly learning from. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but I learn, I have, I have a supervisor that I get to run things through and we share knowledge and that's one-on-one, that's, -on -one, that's a related stuff for me. I have a coach um, that I work through things with. I, I go to the, the Gallup Strengths meetups whenever I can and, and I get to share with uh, the, the other Gallup people. As I said, Dion Redmise is, has been a, a fountain of, of knowledge for me and, and uh, with the stuff that he does. Um, I um, do, I go to networking groups as well. Um, and but I'm very selective about the ones that I go to because they are you know they do take time out of out of me being with the family, um, and I just I stay connected with people through LinkedIn. I I've been watching since you told me asked me to uh, to be part of this. I've been I've been overdosing in in call to coach <laughs> from America and from Australia or from India and <laughs> uh, to get a to get a feel for that. Um, so you know I, I have a I have a strong network and then because I have Relator, I don't have to be in touch with people all the time. That's the other good thing. I, I met with a, a colleague the other day and she said, "Come, well, I haven't seen you for two years, but it feels like yesterday." And uh, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah, because we're we're all. I think it's a we're on a bit of a lifelong learning journey, and 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 I'm pretty activated in that. So, do you use strength spotting with your your three year old, and do you talk about strengths with your partner? <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. I asked. Well, I made it. I asked my partner what uh, what the strengths were, and um, and I got them. And and I I don't. I, I try to avoid those discussions because you know you should never coach at home. Um, <laughs> And but my partner does. I does come home sometimes and say, "Oh, I tried one of your little tricks today <laughs> with, with someone at work," and uh, and we get the feedback through there. Um, my little man Max, I I I look at him and I look at his um, behaviour now, and I and I think back to even listening to uh, some of the things that Marcus Bu Marcus Buckingham used to say on his videos, um, and how we learn so much and we learn so much about behaviour and and our our yearning uh, at a young age. And I look at him now, and I just I do I see um, I see his strengths developing, and and you know I really encourage I really encourage that you know I, I, and and I encourage him the things that he loves to do I I encourage him to do more and more of that, and the things that he doesn't like so much to do, unless it's brushing his teeth or something that he really has to do, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know I don't force him I don't I, I don't force him I, I just I allow him to 
to really develop those. And I think that's, you know, this whole journey has, has done a lot for me in my parenting as well. But as I said, I, I learn a lot from him about resilience, about emotional intelligence, um, about, uh, you, you know, determination. <laughs> and they're all my core values as well. So, mm. You've gone through this process and 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 you're starting your own business and 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 having a successful go with that. So that's fantastic because it's not an easy thing and and not everyone succeeds in that. But you have most certainly. Do you have some tips for those in the audience who may be new to strengths or new to to, to being a you know consulting? Do you want to share? I, yeah, I do. I you know it, it's not an easy it's not an easy job. But one day I decided that there were so many pictures of people succeeding who were climbing mountains. Have you ever noticed that? Mm. And I thought, <laughs> and I thought, yeah. And I've done that. I've climbed lots of mountains. And where there's a peak, there's a trough. And um, and so I've decided now that I'm not climbing any more mountains. I'm 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 actually I'm just going to keep walking. But I'm going to keep walking. In a straight line, you know, uh, you know this whole mountain climbing thing. It's for the birds, really. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I, I'm, I'm done with mountain climbing with my business. Um, in saying that, you know, it, it is, it is difficult to start your own business and, and where to go. I've, re, I've rebranded a couple of times. I, um, because I didn't want to be Kelly Waitcher Consulting. I wanted to be different. I wanted to be unique. I wanted um, to, to use my engagement and my humour to be able to. Uh, to be able to drive people's learning, um, and and so what I would say to people is is you know invest in yourself, invest in yourself, learn, 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 learn many tools, not just one, and then choose, uh, take what you want and leave the rest. Um, as I said, there is I've got so much information. You know what that does for me with with even with Gallup's information is that I can create more. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've taken the tip off the iceberg of the information I have for Gallup and I've used it. But you know what, as I build um, more and more uh, Gallup and I get longer sessions that are that are related to strengths, then I have so much more information to be able to take from. I I really recommend you you have friends in um, in the learnings that you do and uh, when you're doing them and you and you stay connected with those people. As I said, um, you know uh, uh, Dion just comes to mind all the time because he's always there, but uh, he's been, you know, really supportive of people in the, in this process as well. Um, I know Oscar Chimboli is is very supportive supportive as well, and and so I think you need to stay connected to those people and and just ask them. You know, the hardest thing that people find is asking for help, and I think uh, for me, when you come out of something new, like four days of intense uh, Gallup strength training you need some help you need someone to be able to validate what you're doing you need someone to be able to say well does this work for you does that work for you because you're not in a position where you can sort of just test it on your customer <laughs> and what if it doesn't work there's my maximizer um so so yes yeah, so really connect with people who are engaged and using the tools that you want to use mm -hmm. i would say and you know what don't give up determination you know, and I maybe mean, that's my connectedness, but I, you know, I've had peaks and I've had troughs and I've had, you know, terrible troughs, and I've just stopped and I've thought about, you know, who I am, where I'm at, what I have to offer, and, um, you know, I've gone to the occasional psychic, <laughs> 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 and you know, and I went, I went to one not not just at, in December because December January is terrible for people with their own business, and she said to me. Who were you not to put out there what you have? That was it. Mm. And you know what? She was right, you know? And so I paid for that, whatever. Some people get a facial. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but I'm doing that now. I'm putting myself out there and here I am on, on Call to Coach. So Absolutely. so don't give up. Put yourself out there. People, what we think we know and we think it must be so simple to everybody else, it's not. People don't know what their top five are. People don't know what it means to have this yearning. And when they, ha they know what it means to have it, but they don't know how to feel it, you know. And this is our job. This is our job as coaches is to be able to get people to be able to express themselves, feel that black hole that they've got so that they can have, a you know, more success in every area of their life. Yeah, I'm very absolutely. passionate about this, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know that about you. I know that about you. And that's one of the reasons I wanted you to come and join us today. So, um Jim, do you have any questions or anything from the chat room or any thoughts? 
Yeah, I had a question for you. You mentioned Q12, uh, and yes. that's a, it's a pretty – it's getting to be a more utilized tool by our coaches. What did you do to get ready to use a Q12? Certainly, it's just not something you can decide one day, hey, I'll, I'll use Gallup's Q12. So how did you get ready to be able to use that instrument? Well, that's exactly what I did, actually. <laughs> I said. There you go. <laughs> Okay, let me tell you how I got ready, Jim. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I, I, in fact, I, I, um, I was trying to do more of the, the Gallup Strength stuff and I was trying to get into an organisation to use the Gallup. Uh, I wanted them to, to, to take on the Gallup uh, Strengths. And um, uh, I said to them, no, this is a great tool, which is about engagement, which I was struggling with. Um, and uh, so I said, this is great this great tool called the Gallup Q12 and let's do it. And <laughs> so I pretty much did, Jim. I just went, yeah, All let's right. do it. Um, I'm, Jim, one of, one, of my, one of my key things that I say to myself is say yes and figure out how. Yeah. It's worked so for me that, my entire how did, life. How did it go for yeah. you as far as, I mean, it is easy to purchase. It's easy to mm. get them to take the report. You create the survey. You can create a few custom questions. Yes. Uh, you can deploy it fairly easily. So that all that stuff is easy. What about the discussions on the back end? Yes. Yeah, so what I did is I um, I did the Q12. I um, I really researched into it. I spoke to Claire a lot um, <laughs> to say this is the first time I've done it and it was for, you know, 40, 50 people. Um, how can I make this work? Uh, what would you do if you were doing this? Um, and, again, it's when I said to you, when you, you know, I say yes and then figure out how, and part of that figuring out how is I need to ask the experts because I need to be the expert when I go into that client. Um, so uh, Claire was very patient with me. Thank you, Claire, in Bangkok. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and I got it out there. And then uh, I said to them, like, we, we're just about to go into, it's a year later. What we did then is once once we did the Q12, we, we really looked at it and looked at, Again, I combined it with, we, we then did an extended disc for the whole executive team. Um, then uh, I did some individual coaching for the executive team where I used the uh, Gallup uh, top five. And you know what? It's created change in that team. It's created change in that team. And now uh, I've just gone back and said, well, it's been 12 months. I want to know that this has what's happened uh, in the organisation. So um, we're just about to, to do... 12 months down the track, where are we in our, um, in the organization now? Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. can remeasure and get another, yeah, that's yeah, great. You didn't, you didn't do nothing. You, you spent a lot of time learning. We, um, yes. and we've got some courses available for that as well. Right. I mean, we have some, some management leadership courses, uh, specifically to the Q12. Are we offering those in Australia? Do you know, are those available at the Sydney office? So we have a high performance team leader course. It's a two day course. And I think that there may be one on the on um, next month or late or at the end of this month, potentially. Um, and I think that's the only one that we have right now that's open enrollment. Well, you could know exactly if you go to courses.gallup.com. <laughs> And well, and most people listen to this in a time shifted manner. And so uh, you can always see where our available courses are. But we talk a lot about the Q12 inside that high performance uh, team leader uh, course that we have out there. And so that's available I'll, for you. I'll get um, myself well. on yeah, so, that. Yeah, so that, that might be another course that, uh, although, I'll, you know, I've, I've jumped into it. I'm getting ready to teach. We'll do Q12 tomorrow in a. Um, I have 50 students that are in their capstone project. So they're seniors for a 453 course and they're going to get their first Q12. And then mm. um, seven weeks from now, they'll take it again and, uh, mm. and see if we even, you know, see what we've done with their engagement during the, the length of the course. And so a lot of people That's have said, great. you have to wait a year. You don't have to wait a year. You can, yeah. you can come back six weeks later if you want, um, as far as measurement yeah. goes. So very powerful yeah. tool. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Was that, the only reason we waited is because we did a lot of coaching in between times. No, you did the right thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of organizations yeah, on our enterprise side will go six months to a year. That seems to be a pretty mm -hmm. standard kind of uh, a length. Mm -hmm. So you did the right thing. We just have been able to use it in a school setting to kind of measure the engagement in this course. And you know, it really is one of those kinds of things we're trying to teach the kids. You can measure this thing when you get out, like when you're in, yes. when you're in a job and someone says, Hmm, I wonder how we measure engagement. You know, you've, we've got this tool that's available for them. So, and we're getting close on our time. Uh, let's wrap it up. 
Yeah, that sounds great. So Kelly, um, just as we're closing out, is there anything that I should have asked you or that you really want to make sure that you, you say before we uh, say goodbye? And make sure you say your website. Oh, yeah, my website. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, look, what I, what, I, what, I, what I did want to say was, you know, that I, that I am grateful to have had the experience that I, that I have had, including that first client that I talked about that's, that really paved the way for me as far as my relator strength went. Um, I'm delighted to have been able to take the strengths journey and to understand not only myself first but have an awareness of those people around me um, and really have the ability to contribute on the overall development of others, um, one person or one group at a time. and, and and really, I just want to thank you, um, Jim, thank you, because I, I said to Jim, you could have a little lie down if you wanted to, and you stayed with us the whole time, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Anne, for, for asking me on. Um, you know, I, I just think it's amazing. It's an amazing um, thing to be able to, be, it's an amazing uh, opportunity to be able to, to change a person's life, and I think that, you know, we're doing that one person, one group, one organisation at a time. So, well done, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I think that's it for us, Jim. I don't, don't think we can possibly say anything better than that. <laughs> all right. Good, good session. We'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions or comments if you'd like to be a guest blogger, if you have some original content, four to 600 words, and you'd like to see if it's we can get that on the coach's blog, you can send that to us, coaching at gallup.com. Uh, make sure you put guest blogger in the subject line so we can route that accordingly. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program as well as a whole bunch of other ones. Kelly mentioned those. She kind of ramped up to get ready for this by listening to those. We have tons of these available, uh, both audio and recorded video available for you. It's all on our coach's blog. Go to coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, we do have courses. I mentioned this earlier. We have courses that lead to that certification. You can head out to the our courses site. Just go to courses.gallup.com. And if you ever have any questions around those, send us an email to our certification account. Real simple. Certification at Gallup. Dot com. Don't forget, we have uh, podcasts available for you as well. This is called The Coach. We have another one called Theme Thursday. If you ever want to dive deep into the Theme Thursday themes, one theme at a time. Kelly, did you get a chance to listen to any of our Oh, yeah, I love those. I've, I've, di I've deep dived into all of those. I love them. I love them when Kurt did them, and I've just done downloaded the whole 2016 series as well, so it's fantastic. Yeah. I did forget one thing, Jim. Yeah. Can I just say yeah www.corporatemagic.com.au. It's an Australian uh, corporate magic. There is one in America, but it's a completely different business. Um, <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you for that. You stuck it in right at, the, right at the last minute. Good job on that. We, uh, we've also, speaking of new things, we've released a new Android and iPhone app for top five. So if you're out there, and all 34 as well, it's just our strengths app. If you had that on your phone, it'll automatically upgrade. If you didn't, you can download it for free today. Again, head out to the coach's blog, coaching.gallup.com. If you found this helpful, we'd ask that you share it. We want to thank you for coming out tonight to uh, and tomorrow and yesterday and tomorrow and whenever it is. <laughs> and uh, we'd, we'd say uh, thanks for watching, and we'll say goodbye, everybody.